Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth resource video for Physics 117. We are almost halfway through the course. We've had the first midterm and so that makes it a good time to take stock, look back and think about what you might need to do differently ahead of the next midterm uh, and the final exam which is not that far away uh, in terms of the end of the course. So. In this video, I am going to ask you a series of pretty direct questions about how you prepared for the midterm and how you felt your performance on that midterm uh, could be improved. And you need to be honest with yourself here if you're going to be able to make some changes. Uh, and then what I want to do is think about some ways in which you could do things differently. And again, think about good habits for studying and not so good habits and hopefully you can avoid some of the bad and, and focus on um, more of the good. So as we go through these, it's a series of questions, they're yes no answers. Uh, just keep score for yourself how many times you answer yes or no, right? So just keep a tally as you go along. Um, so here's the first set of them. It's about preparing for uh, the midterm. Did you make a serious effort to understand the textbook and the material? And by serious effort, I don't mean um, did you understand every word of every problem in the entire textbook. That's not what we're after. We're being sensible here. But did you sort of write off entire chapters and think, oh, there's, no, I, I just don't get that, so I'm going to ignore it. Um, did you work through all the weekly problems that were set, either on your own or with others? These are the practice problems that we set you. Some of them we do in class, some of them we talk about in tutorials, but some of them are provided for you for self-study, so they're for you to do in your own time, and there's hints and advice and that sort of stuff online to support you when you're doing that. Did you review your tutorial tests, your reading quizzes, uh, that you've received grades and, and you've received back, either on your own or with others, to understand where you went wrong. Did you, did you correct your mistakes? Did you try and keep your, your sort of learning log, if you like, your log of what you didn't understand and how you came to understand it, up to date? Um, if you had things that still weren't clear, did you ask about them in tutorials or office hours or post on Piazza or, or try and reach out to someone who could uh, support you in, in resolving that difficulty or sorting out that particular problem? We're not done yet. There's a whole bunch, uh, bunch more of these. Did you think about how to solve problems or the strategy for solving problems even if you didn't work through to the answer? Or, or did you find yourself in the situation where you looked at a question on the midterm and thought, I have absolutely no idea how to start doing this? Um, did you work with other people? Did you collaborate with classmates to prepare for the exam? So quizzing each other, solving problems together, working to sort out uh, issues, whether that was in your tutorial or you know, outside in a study group as well. And then the final one, and I, I realize I am going to sound like your, your parents here, but did you get a decent amount of sleep the night before the exam? Because it turns out that really, really matters. Before I came to UBC, I used to live in the, uh, in the UK, and there was a study from the Institute of Education with like grade three or four or five kids, so you know, sort of eight, nine, ten year olds. Uh, and they did this controlled experiment where half the class, they, they made the parents keep a, a sort of sensible bedtime, uh, and the other half of the class, the kids could stay up till whenever watching TV. Of course, the kids absolutely loved this. They thought it was like Christmas every day. And then, of course, what they did was they took these two groups back into the classroom and, and they, they sort of did reading and spelling and writing comprehension tests appropriate to these children's 
level of development, you know, their level of skill. And what they found out was that the sort of sleep-deprived cohort regressed over a year in reading age in two weeks, right? So sleep is really, really important. Um, and actually, it overrides any of the others, because even if you did all the other things, if you, if you, you, you know, you didn't get enough rest and you were anxious and you just weren't able to relax and, and perform in the exam, it, it can have a bad effect. Um, so that's about preparing for the exam. Just a couple more on actually in the midterm, in the exam itself. Did you allocate your time effectively so that you were able to attempt all the problems on the exam? Did you spend a proportionate amount of time between the questions and the sections um, in, in line roughly with how the marks were distributed? Because that's an exam technique issue. If you're spending 75% of the exam on the first section that only carries 40% of the marks or 50% of the marks, you're not doing yourself uh, any favours. Uh, and then lastly, about the materials that you, you took in, um, were they sufficiently well organised that if you did need to consult them, you could find what you were, first of all, you could find what you were looking for, right? So did you take the right stuff into the exam? Uh, and you could find what you were looking for quickly, right? So you weren't looking through this page of like microscopic writing to be able to find where you'd written the thing that you, uh, you just needed to, uh, to check. So the basic idea is the more of these questions you can answer yes to, the better prepared you are likely to be for the midterm. So the advice is, is pretty simple. We need to figure out how we can support you in being able to answer yes to more of these questions after the second midterm. And one of the ways you can think about that is really looking quite hard at how you go about studying and preparing, what you do. Uh, and the next couple of slides are about, if you like, good habits and bad habits for studying. Um, I'll start with the bad habits first. So unproductive study habits include the following. Passive rereading, kind of you know, flicking through the textbook, thinking, yeah, oh, I remember when we did Newton's third law, and oh yeah, I remember that was a clicker question, right? Just, just sort of idly flicking through stuff. Highlighting overkill. Uh, there's mixed views about the usefulness of highlighting. Some of you probably do it, and you think it, it's really important to help you organize your ideas. Um, as I say, the sort of research evidence on whether it's a good thing or not is decidedly mixed. But if you do use it, be, be, be careful about how much you use it, right? Otherwise, you're going through the textbook and, and you're highlighting every third word. Naturally, it doesn't really help you too much. Um, falling into the trap of looking at a problem thinking, yeah, I could do that. Um, you may be right, but time and time again, I've actually asked students to solve a problem that they think they can do and they find they, they you know, they, they hit some obstacles along the way. So don't sort of look at that, think you recognize that type of problem and think, yeah, I, I, I know how to do that. A cramming is not a bad, not a good idea. Um, research again clearly shows that spacing out what you do over a period of time helps material and understanding stick better than cramming it all in in a short space of time. Um, another the bad habit to fall into is solving problems you already know how to solve because it makes you feel better because you can solve the problems and you feel like you're doing productive work, right? I worked for two hours and I solved seven problems. Yeah, but you already knew how to solve that type of problem. Go and work on a problem or a topic or an area that you don't know how to solve. Um, group sessions becoming too social, right? I'm not being a, a, a sort of killjoy and saying 
don't aim to have fun in group sessions, but remember you're there to, to sort of solve problems or work on exam questions or whatever it is you're doing. And there's the work stuff here, and then you can go do the social stuff. Um, not resolving difficulties. Uh, in other words, identifying that you know, your understanding of projectile motion is flawed somehow and, and not fixing it. So knowing there's a problem and just trying to push it off to the side. Um, learning, I've put it in quotes, while distracted, this is the multitasking thing again. Right, thinking that, that you know it's okay. I'll just browse as well as uh, doing some problems. Um, try and and spend the time, not distracted, uh, and then not getting enough sleep. We already talked about. Uh, let's turn to the flip side, the the good stuff, good habits to support effective preparation. Uh, testing your recall of something by application. Right? Not reciting Newton's laws, but solving problems on Newton's laws. Spacing up your practice. Right? So the opposite of cramming, not thinking I'm going to do everything for physics on these two days. Right? Space it out over a couple of weeks if you can. Equally, mixing up what you do. Right? So don't concentrate solely, for example, on one chapter for three hours. Try and mix things up a bit. Um, it's not just about how much time you spend studying, right? We saw that in one of the earlier resource videos. So it's okay to say, I'm going to study really intensively for 40 minutes with no distractions, and then I'm going to take 20 minutes every hour off, right? So really study intensively, make it count, and then take a break. Uh, discussing it with others is always a good thing. That's the collaboration theme coming back again. Uh, something I call explain it to a 10 year old, right? So I have a, a, a seven going on eight year old little boy and he's always asking questions. And sometimes they're really annoying questions. Sometimes they're really, really good questions. Like he said, why do things fall to the ground, right? Time for an impromptu lecture on Newton's law of gravity, right? Next day, he comes back and says, why doesn't the moon fall to the ground if everything attracts everything else, right? Good questions. See if you can find ways of explaining this material at the level a 10-year-old would understand. And you can do that with these topics, right? This is the physics of everyday life that we're doing. It's not quantum mechanics. You can see what's happening with situations and scenarios within this course, right? Things get thrown to the ground or things roll or things slide, okay? It's very, very easy to grasp what's or to visualize what's, what's going on. Um, focus, so actually focus in on what it is you don't understand rather than just sitting down to revise you know, chapter seven or something like that. And I guess another way of thinking about focus is minimize distractions as well. Uh, and the last one is what I call know your golden time. And, and by golden time, what I mean is that period of the day when you feel you are at your most effective, right? For me, it's before 10 o'clock in the morning. And so whenever I'm scheduling you know, writing a paper or a new course or something that I know is going to require a lot of cognitive effort. I'll try and do it during that period of time. And kind of stuff that I can do, you know, writing emails or stuff that I can do when I'm brain dead at four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, then, you know, I, I, I try and plan activities accordingly. So, most of the ideas that I've talked about within, uh, within this video come from these two articles. Uh, one written by Richard Felder, an engineering prof, uh, called Memo to Students Who Are Disappointed With Their Last Grade. That's where the ask yourself these questions about the midterm came from. Uh, and the other one is 
how to success at math. I realize looking at that it should say succeed at math and science even if you flunked algebra. So that's from Barbara Oakley. And if you're interested, like both of them are like two or three pages long. So if you're interested in reading them, I'll put the, uh, the, the descriptions in, uh, in uh, I'll put the links in the descriptions below this. Um, just by way of final advice, if you feel you're doing some or most or all of these things and for some reason it's still not working, please come and talk to us. Come to office hours, send a private message on, on Piazza. We want to try and help and, and support your success in this course. Uh, and if you're feeling, having watched this, kind of overwhelmed and, and don't know where to start, uh, or you're struggling to, uh, to keep up, uh, likewise, please do, uh, please do get in contact.